Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's success in winning the bid to host the World Expo 2030. His Majesty the King expressed congratulations on this major global achievement, which reflects Saudi Arabia's prestigious international standing and constitutes a culmination of its continuous achievements and success in all fields, as well as its ability to host successful global events. His Majesty praised the historic deep-rooted relations between the two countries and their peoples in all fields, wishing Saudi Arabia continued progress and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received an invitation from the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, to attend the 44th session of the GCC Supreme Council hosted by Qatar in December. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the Emir of Qatar for the invitation and wished the upcoming Gulf Summit success in building on the Council's achievements and enhancing GCC countries' integration. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a ceremony at al sakhir Palace to receive the credentials of three new ambassadors to the kingdom. The ceremony was attended by His Highness the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, Minister of the Royal Court, a Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chief of Royal Protocol. The new ambassadors arrived at Sakhir Palace individually, where they were received by Chief of Royal Protocol. The ambassador of Brazil, Andriano Silva Pucci, arrived at Sakhir Palace, where the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty the King received the credentials of the ambassador and they exchanged welcome sentiments. His Majesty the King hailed the strong bilateral relations and steadily growing ties and the development witnessed in all fields, wishing him every success in performing his diplomatic duties. The ambassador of Pakistan, Thaqib Raouf, arrived at Sakhir Palace, where the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty the King received the credential of the ambassador and they exchanged welcome statements. His Majesty the King hailed the strong bilateral relations and steadily growing ties and the development witnessed in all fields, wishing him success in performing his diplomatic duties. The ambassador of Egypt, Riham Abdul Hamid Mahmoud Khalil, arrived at Sakhir Palace where the usual protocols were performed.
His Majesty the King received the credentials of the ambassador and they exchanged welcome statements. His Majesty the King hailed the strong bilateral relations and steadily growing ties and the development witnessed in all fields, wishing her every success in performing her diplomatic duties. The ambassadors conveyed to His Majesty the King greetings and appreciation of their country's leaders, who wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness and Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's success on winning the bid to host the World Expo 2030. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister congratulated Saudi Arabia on its global achievement, highlighting its prestigious international standing and ability to host successful global events. His Royal Highness commended the long-standing relations between the two countries and their peoples, wishing Saudi Arabia continued progress and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Royal Highness sent similar cable to the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 106 of 2023 appointing directors of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority LMRA based on a proposal by the Minister of Labour and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the LMRA. The edict stipulates the appointment of the following directors at the LMRA. Omar Mahmoud Abdullah Hajji shall be appointed as Director of the Human Resources Directorate. Hassan Jamal Abdurrahim Al Rahma shall be appointed as the Director of the Business Development Directorate. Iman Abdul Jalil Mohammed Shabib shall be appointed as the Director of the Expatriate Services Directorate. Ahmed Ibrahim Mohammed Al Junaid shall be appointed as the Director of the Preventive Monitoring Directorate. Talal Ali Ahmed Al Amr shall be appointed as the Director of the Information Technology Directorate. Ahmed Abdul Nabi Ali Abdullah shall be appointed as the Director of the Labor Systems Development Directorate. And Fahad Abdul Aziz Al Bin Ali shall be appointed as the Director of the Partnerships and Outreach Directorate. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, chaired the Council's meeting in its eighth session at its headquarters in Rifa'a. Her Royal Highness expressed appreciation and pride in the royal support to the Council's work as part of a process that ensured adopting the best institutional practices to activate the specialities assigned to it as a national mechanism that activates the general policy for the advancement of Bahraini women. She stated that the royal support is a source of pride and an incentive for doubling efforts and increasing ambitions for further efforts and achievements in the process of prosperity led by His Majesty the King. Her Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for its support and cooperation with the Council to activate its strategies in line with the government's priorities which reflect positively on women's participation in the national economy and the quality of the services they receive. She recalled the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the SCW on the occasion of the 22nd anniversary of the Council's establishment, reiterating that the visit constitutes a lofty gesture that reflects His Royal Highness's appreciation for the Council's work and efforts towards Bahraini women. Her Royal Highness noted the cooperation and coordination with state institutions and sectors and the resulting development of the Bahraini experience in developing and implementing policies to achieve gender equality and national development. The wife of His Majesty the King reiterated her congratulations to all the Council's members and her wishes of success in supporting and activating its role in achieving the goals of the next work stage. The Council listened to a briefing by the Council Secretary General Hal Al Ansari on the developments in the National Plan for the Advancement of Bahraini Women 2023 to 2026. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa led the Bahraini delegation at the 12th General Assembly of the Islamic Solidarity Sports Federation, chaired by His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal. 
The meeting began with a welcome speech by His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz bin Turki Al Faisal, followed by a speech by the representative of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Ambassador Tariq Ali Bukhit. After that, the items on the agenda were reviewed and the minutes of the previous Extraordinary General Assembly meeting were approved, followed by the approval of the General Assembly's decision to extend the terms of the Office of the Board of Directors. The General Secretariat's report from the period from March to November 2023 was also reviewed and the Union's future strategic plans was presented. Then the amendments to the Union status were reviewed. During the meeting, the report on hosting the 6th Islamic Solidarity Games, which is scheduled to be organized by the Saudi Olympic and Paralympic Committee in 2025, was reviewed, and the initial report on the inspection committee was presented. The opening of nominations to host the 7th Islamic Solidarity Games in 2029 was also announced. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed thanks and gratitude to the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister for hosting this meeting and for the generous hospitality extended to the Bahraini delegation. He also congratulated His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki for the success of the work of the General Assembly and the results that emerged from the meeting. His Highness praised the important leadership role played by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in advancing the countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation in general and the Islamic Solidarity Sports Federation in particular, which in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia continued progress and success. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the opening ceremony of the second edition of Saudi Games, which was held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and organized by the Saudi Olympic and Paralympic Committee in the presence of GSA Deputy Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Asker, BOC Secretary General Faris Al Kohiji, and a number of senior sports officials in Saudi Arabia and other countries. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed thanks and appreciation to the Chairman of the Saudi Olympic and Paralympic Committee and Minister of Sports, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal, for the official invitation to attend the opening ceremony, which reflects the brotherly relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. His Highness affirmed that the Saudi Games are a testament to the progress and development witnessed by Saudi sports, which has become a destination for major sports tournaments and major celebrities and football athletes. His Highness praised the opening ceremony and its artistic and entertainment segments, an official and sporting presence. His Highness wished the leadership, government and people of Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity.
Under the patronage of the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, a ceremony was held honoring the units that ranked first in the 2023 Combat and Administrative Readiness Test. In the presence of the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Dia bin Sagr Al Naimi. The ceremony began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha was then recited from the souls of the fallen servicemen who sacrificed their lives while performing their sacred duty in defense of the homeland and for the souls of the martyrs of Gaza. After that, Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations at the BDF, Major General Ibrahim Ghanim Al Fadala, gave a briefing on the Combat and Administrative Readiness Testing Program. The BDF Commander in Chief then honored the units that won first place. The Royal Special Force has won first place. Rahman al Rahim, وتقدير سيدي صاحب الجلالة الملك المعظم قائد الأعلى القوات المسلحة وتقدير للواجبات والأدوار اللي نفذتوها في العمليات وفي السلم وإن شاء الله من هذا المستوى وأعلى نستطيع رفع مستوى قوة الدفاع في الجاهزية القتالية وفي مجالات أخرى أيضا سجل تفتيشات الجاهزية 1970 أول تفتيش وكلنا نسميه التفتيش الإداري السابق وفي الحقيقة يعني جاهزية عمليات وأيضا جاهزية تدريبية المرحلة الجاية إن شاء الله بندخل في جاهزية العمليات أكثر إن شاء الله اليوم أنا أستطيع أن أعلن وأقول أن في منظومات جديدة فعلا دخلت الخدمة الآن كذا المنظومة ابتدت توصل والتدريب جرى عليه والجزء الثاني من التدريب بعد إن شاء الله جاي وبترفع هذه أيضا من جاهزيتها ليس التدريب فقط هو الجاهزية إنما بعد إدخال المنظومات المتقدمة في هذه المجال وبالأخص مع هذا الأنواع من التهديدات اللي هي موجودة في المنطقة وانتم تعرفونها كلها واليوم احنا امتنا العربية والاسلامية مستهدفة مستهدفة في اوطانها يعني في شعوبها في اراضيها في كل مجال حتى في دينها ما بقى شيء بعد ما شفنا اللي حصل في غزة اي شيء ممكن يصير العالم ما حد عليه الا من القوي اليوم واللي هو مستعد ان يكون جزء من منظومة متكاملة ما يقدر يعيش حتى هذه المأساة اللي حصلت للأطفال والنساء لا يمكن أن تتكرر في أي محل في العالم وانفذت الآن بدون حتى أي عقاب فالقوات المسلحة عليها مسؤولية كبيرة وإن شاء الله قوة الدفاع وقفت في مواقف كثيرة وانتم كنتوا جزء منها في حروب وفي أزمات داخل الوطن وخارج الوطن ولدعم الأشقاء ولله الحمد كلها خرج منها بنتائج مشرفة ولله الحمد والرحمة بعد على شهادانا اللي راحوا وهبوا أرواحهم في سبيل وطن قوة الدفاع ولله الحمد تفتخر بوجود الرجال مثلكم في وسطها وانتو بعد عليكم مسؤوليات جديدة الآن في تطوير الموجود اللي عنده ورافع كفاته اتمنى لكم ان شاء الله التوفيق ومن هذه ان شاء الله المناسبه ومناسبات اخرى دائما نلتقي وياكم ان شاء الله على الخير ان شاء الله اللي الاخوان بعد اللي فازوا واللي ما فازوا ان شاء الله بعد المرات الجايه الله يوفقكم ان شاء الله مشكورين
Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa noted that the force, with the help of Allah the Almighty and with the support of the leadership, will continue to develop and enhance military construction and administrative progress to perform its national mission with determination. He expressed appreciation for all the efforts made to raise the level of combat and administrative readiness which was achieved by the weapons and units of the BDF this year. He instructed the commanders of the weapons and units to convey his congratulations and greetings to all members in various locations and his wishes of success in the combat and administrative readiness tests in the coming years. Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lemsellem chaired the weekly meeting. The meeting discussed a number of proposals regarding social insurance, regulating retirement pensions and benefits for government employees, and amending Article 41 of the Military Retirement Law, in addition to amending Article 90 of the Social Insurance Law. The Council approved the proposals and referred them to the government. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, SCH, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, visited the National Genome Center in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, to inaugurate the cutting edge Nova Sick TMX Plus machine for human genome sequencing purposes. The SCH chairman highlighted the ongoing efforts within the National Genome Project, which aims to utilize gene sequencing in adopting effective national health policies and therapeutic and preventive management plans. The Minister of Health noted that acquiring the machine came within the efforts of using the latest technological trends in the health sector and developing the National Genome Center, which will reflect positively on the various diagnostic and therapeutic services. The President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, took part in the sixth meeting of the Board of the Customs Union Authority in Riyadh. The meeting covered several topics, including the outcomes of the relevant ministerial meetings, follow-up on the implementation of the decisions of the Board of Directors of the Customs Union Authority, following up on the implementation on the requirements of the founding phases of the authority, and following up on the implementation of the work plan to complete the customs. Customs Union. The Federation of Royal Colleges of Physicians in the United Kingdom announced the selection of government hospitals as the first international examination center in Bahrain. On this occasion, government hospitals organized a press conference in the presence of the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, and CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Maryam Al Janahma. Sheikh Hisham appraised the great support that the medical sector enjoys from His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in all that contributes to the development of the health service system in the Kingdom. For her part, Dr. Maryam Al Jalahma indicated that Salmania Medical Complex and the Kingdom of Bahrain will be leaders in the field of medical health education and training in the region. For his part, the representative of the union, Tanzim Raza, indicated that the selection of Salmania Medical Center was based on the capabilities and diversity of patients, the availability of doctors with MRCP degrees, the complex's infrastructure, and the advanced capabilities it contains. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes the extension of the humanitarian pause in the Gaza Strip, allowing the exchange of more hostages and detainees and enabling the entry of additional humanitarian relief aid into Gaza. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs commended the success of the joint mediation efforts by Qatar, Egypt and the U.S. with support from international partners. The ministry urges the international community to intensify efforts for a permanent ceasefire, release of all hostages and detainees, meeting the basic needs of the people of Gaza and facilitating the unimpeded humanitarian assistance to alleviate the suffering of Gaza residents. It also called for a sustained efforts towards peace, the establishment of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital, in accordance